Now today we're looking at a drain valve. This works within the EVAP system. Let's jump right into it. Now the drain valve has a line running to the canister and if you caught the last episode, you know that the canister on a modern Subaru lives in the trunk pan. So let's get access to everything. And once again, just like I stated in the last episode, excellent time to make sure you have enough air in your spare tire. And the awesome thing about a modern Subaru, the EVAP canister lives right here. No need to jack up the vehicle, get nasty, dirty, nothing like that. So we have these metal covers and then these two styrofoam luggage compartments. Easy enough to remove, they're just plastic tabs. Place your hand, let me show you very quickly, you have a tab here and another tab here. Place your hand where that tab is because when you pull on this, it can jump up and hit you in the eye. So just be careful. There we go. Doesn't break. First, we'll remove the middle plate held in by four 12 millimeter fasteners. Here on the right, we have the canister. If you're curious on how to remove this, where these lines go and what they do, I will include a link in the description box below. Then over here is our drain valve. This simply sends ambient air, which simply means outside air. It pumps air directly to the canister. That's all that it does. And this is a filter. The filter is not serviceable. Now the best way for me to show you on how to test everything is by removing it from the vehicle. Before we remove the drain valve, I first want to remove these hoses. Very easy to remove. Can be a little tricky when it comes time to reinstalling these. So I'll show you the correct way when it comes time to reinstalling them. But simply, See here, we have a little plastic tab. There's one here, one on the other side. So you simply just pull back and then push up. Okay, see so how that came right off. I have another one on top over here. Okay, we have an electrical connection back here. And this comes right off. This is just air again. I read one comment on a Subaru forum and uh, the comment was, there's fuel stored in here. There's no fuel, this is just air, okay? Pushes air to the EVAP canister, that's all it does. This comes right out. Very easy to work on here. This should come out, let's see. Whoa, that's what you don't want to do, okay. Okay, here's our assembly. Now with the drain valve here on the bench, I want to do a number of things. As always, I will link all of the tools in the description box below. Fortunately, you do not need a lot of things. Maybe two things in this case. One is a digital multimeter. These are inexpensive, roughly 20 to $25. Now, what I want to do is an ohms or a resistance test. That is the omega symbol on the meter, okay? Now every meter has a red and a black lead. And take a look at our harness connector. This is where you plug in the harness connector. And you have two prongs. All that we're doing is taking the leads from the multimeter and touching these two prongs. Now it doesn't matter which lead goes where. So in my case, I have the red lead going to the right prong. This the black lead I'll have going to the left prong, and a good reading, an average reading is 20 to 30 ohms. So let's see if we have a reading, just watch the meter. And we, we have roughly 30 ohms, 29, 30 ohms. So this is a very good reading. If you don't see anything here, the valve is no good, it's that simple. But if everything comes back okay, you're getting a reading here. Let's see the function, there's a motor in here. As you can see, the plunger, that plunger moves back and forth. Let's activate this motor. Now back in the trunk, this is the harness connector that plugs into the drain valve. And I want to verify that not only is it getting power, but which of these two leads happens to be the power source, because that matters when it comes time to testing this motor. So once again, 
I have the multimeter. In this case, we want the volts DC setting. Now the black lead is going to ground. That's any good metal point. And then I have a probe kit that allows me to insert this probe very nicely into the harness connector. Now if you don't have a probe kit, you don't want to purchase one. They're like eight bucks for a nice kit, but you can simply use a paper clip, very gently place it inside the lead that you want to test and see if you have a reading. So let's see what happens. So let's turn on the ignition. Now what we want to see here is 12 volts. Now don't be alarmed if you see this jumping around. This is a millivolt reading, okay? Hold on, let me turn off the radio. So once again, black wire is going to ground. There's two terminals in here. Let's first touch the terminal on the right and see if we have a reading. That says three volts. What we're looking for is battery voltage, which is around 12. Let's try this guy. And there we go, 12 volts. This is what we want to see. So in our case, the left prong here is the power source and the harness connector clicks into the drain valve like this. The, uh, the tab is on the six o'clock position. So that means that this prong on the left is receiving positive power. So left would be positive, the guy on the right is negative. So now we need to activate this motor and to do that we need a 12 volt battery source. Now I happen to have a battery here that pushes out 12 volts. Maybe you have a cordless tool that pushes out 12 volts. You just want to dig up some power source so you can direct the power to the valve. So I have a wire hooked up to the negative terminal of the battery and if you look closely I've taken the sleeve Okay, and pushed it down. And the reason behind that is because when I hook up the positive lead, I don't want these two to touch. Otherwise, it can blow a perfectly good motor. So let's see what happens here. And I, I can actually feel it move in my hand. It's so quiet, but let me see if I can get this on camera. Gosh, it's really quiet, but it does work. But that motor certainly works. So those are the main areas you want to check. Verify that the harness connector is receiving 12 volts of power. Secondly, verify that the ohms or resistance test is within spec. And lastly, apply power to the motor and see or listen if that motor is moving. Now lastly, if you do have an EVAP code, most likely for a small leak, you have to inspect the valve itself. In other words, the housing. Are there any cracks anywhere, any holes? Even if the hole, the, the diameter of the hole is the size of a pin, you will have an EVAP leak. So you have to track that down along with the hoses that lead to and from the drain valve. So you have to check everything. Bottom line, the easiest way to check is using a smoke machine. If you don't want to invest in one, Maybe you could just go to the local mechanic, they'll charge you for an hour and they can smoke machine the EVAP system and track down the leak. But that's all it takes to test and replace one of these valves. Now lastly, let me show you how to reinstall the clips because they are a little tricky. Now these clips go in a very specific way. You have two ends, one right here, another one right here. These two ends have to go inside. Okay, inside the hose. If they end up on the outside, then the connector balloons. Okay, so you have to make sure these two guys right here end up on the inside. 